Hello everybody, uh, this is Hugo Weller Mac, and uh, today I have the great honor to have a chat and an academic interview with Professor Peter Sanak, who is a renowned mathematician in the world, and he was awarded the Shaw Prize in Mathematical Sciences in 2024. So to begin with this chat, uh, so could I ask you something about your personal experience in life? Uh, yeah, so when did you determine to pursue uh, your mathematical journey? So as we all know, to begin with a mathematical journey, we need to uh, be inspired from very professional people. And uh, for example, our mentors, our teachers, or even our parents when we were young. Uh, so basically, I was inspired from many good teachers as well as my parents in order to love mathematics. So uh, as an experienced academic mentor that you have been doing in the past uh, 30 years, so what do you think the roles of being a good mentor or you know, how the inspiration could help with the career development of the next generation? Okay, that's a long and complicated question, so let me try to answer sure. it one step at a sure. time. So maybe I first start with myself. Sure. Uh, so I come from South Africa. I was born and grew up in Johannesburg. And uh, at high school, uh, while I enjoyed math, I didn't take it that seriously, to be honest with you. Sure. I was uh, very involved in playing chess. I was a professional chess player basically in high school doing nothing else uh, and my dream was to be a uh, go play internationally but of course uh, my father who was a big supporter of me and my brothers um, was dubious about that while he was supporting what I do he was insistent that before I go try to become a professional chess player I, I learned something useful and he uh, insisted I go to university, which was one of the most <laughs> important things for me. <laughs> because once I got there, I was uh, exposed to some real math for the first time, to I abstract see. math. I see. So like in high school, maybe it was more routine kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Once I saw abstract math and how you, by abstraction, you take a concrete problem, think about it and understand it completely, I was completely taken by that <clears throat> and chess became to look like not so interesting compared to math and I from that moment on math sort of took over my life and of course you mentioned mentoring um, I had fantastic mentors at the yeah. University of Witwatersrand which is where I did my undergraduate they uh, inspired me, they taught me the basics of modern mathematics. Um, I was lucky enough to be ready once I was leaving to go study abroad and get sort of into the much more mainstream side of thinking about math. And uh, they, the preparation of those teachers was uh, really significant to the point where this when I, I came to Stanford as a graduate student, I think I was as prepared as anybody from Oxford, Cambridge, Harvard, Princeton. I was as ready as them. So those uh, teachers in South Africa, where I did both math and applied math, by the way, influenced me greatly. And uh, I think the way I went forward uh, in my way of mentoring other people was already formed at that point. But once I got to Stanford, mm -hmm. And I made a, I was really deliberately going to Stanford in order to go study with the person I did study with, Paul Cohen, one of the great mathematicians of the 20th century. He solved Hilbert's first problem, the independence of the continuum hypothesis. And he was known to be a lively and brilliant person and um, people recommended that that's the kind of person I should go uh, work with. And uh, when I arrived there, uh, he was everything that everybody said, uh, brilliant, competitive, uh, just yeah. wonderful. And I learned uh, from him very quickly. Mm -hmm. In fact, the style of mathematics I do, I don't believe really in fields, I believe in problems. But the first thing you do is you think about problems and then you learn around the problems. Mm -hmm. And that 
you of course become expert at something, otherwise it's very difficult to compete. So you have to spend a lot of time developing intuition. But in the end, you are interested in trying to understand the difficult problems that are holding mathematics back. And he, uh, he was very influential in that way on my career. And as a consequence, um, I would say my style is, if I can emulate anything that, a little bit of what he did, I, I would be very happy. And uh, that's what I, I tried to do. I mean, there were many other mentors for me that are extremely important. Um, he was very interested in the work of a Norwegian mathematician, Atle Selberg, who was at the Institute for Advanced Studies and uh, had developed tools to attack many problems in number theory. And when I arrived and started to work with Paul Cohen, he said, uh, I'd come there to work in foundations, in logic. And he said, oh, I'm not interested in logic anymore. I'm interested sure. in, in the Riemann hypothesis, right. which is a very important unsolved problem still today, as, as unsolved as it's always been. And uh, he said that he, in order to attack these sort of problems, uh, he, he felt he wanted to understand Selberg's work better. And for me, he said, let's learn Selberg's work together. I see. And that was a, a learning experience that completely accelerated and sobered me up, working with him, trying to understand somebody else's work, and me hanging on like this. Right. And, uh, after, uh, and I would say Selberg's work is the most influential in, uh, in what I, I became an expert at. I see. Um, so those were people who mentored me. Um, you asked about me mentoring others, yes. right? The experience. So, that yeah, you yeah. Could so share. I've had, uh, I've been very fortunate to have fantastically strong students, I see. fields medalists, uh, all oh, sorts of yeah. winners of great prizes. Um, I've had my, probably more than 57 PhD mm. students in my career. And um, I think I am a reasonable mentor after all this time. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> um, my view with students is to try bring out the best in them, to try see where their talent is. Some students are so good you don't have to do anything. You just right. make sure that they don't go the wrong way. That's all. Right. But you just sort of say they just go that way. Um, and um, you 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 don't sort of prescribe. I uh, I mean, so I think I've learned from my experience how to mentor, but it's a very delicate business. Right. Um, I hope that if you interviewed my students, they would feel quite yes. positive about the experience. Anyway, I've, sure. I've had a lot of experience and it's extremely important for my career, by the way, because right. your students allow you to think about things that you weren't thinking about, but you, you go look at that and then you learn as much from them as they learn from you. And of course, often you say, go look for this, and when they go look, you say, go here, go dig there, you'll find gold. And then they go and they dig and they find silver. And you said, oh, of course I told you, you'd find silver. <laughs> but right. then you learn from them. Right. Yeah, I very strongly agree with what you mentioned just now. Uh, so actually, I hope one day I could mentor many good students as what uh, you it's did. It's very rewarding. Yeah. It's very rewarding. And of course, they're successes and they're not successes. Right. But you, right. you learn and... Uh, because that's but a, good. it's a very, for me, it's been one of the most important parts of my career sure. and my research. Sure, sure. Often students will solve a problem you have, you know, they just come with a brilliant idea. Right. Never underestimate how good other people are. Yes, <laughs> definitely. Sometimes uh, when I was delivering class in the university, I encountered the same situation mm -hmm. when I couldn't solve a problem. Sometimes students will yeah. raise up their hand and then, you know, they will try telling me what to do next. Yes, yes. That's a really wonderful and fantastic yeah. experience. Yeah. Uh, so you must learn from your students. Yeah. yeah. And I learned a lot from what you mentioned just now, basically uh -huh. about the work that you like and uh, your interests in different parts of the number theory and also even in geometry you mentioned, right? Yes, yes. Yeah. So uh, 
yeah, you you have worked in different institutions. They are very top institutions in the United States. Uh, for example, the New York University, the Stanford University, and now in Princeton University. So all these are very fabulous and prestigious university across the world. Mm. So uh, how do you think these universities they provide a very did they provide a very nice teaching and learning environment to you, uh, which contributes to your academic career? And uh, to what extent this university encourage the scientific research and advancement, providing financial support, especially to the new faculty members, and or even you know, extending and promoting the collaboration strategies among the departments. And in different departments in the same university, or even with other universities across the globe. Yeah, so uh, I've been very fortunate to be at uh, wonderful institutions. And uh, um, in the past, uh, I've got my degree, undergraduate degree, 50 years ago, more or less. Yeah. So I've watched how mathematics, uh, sociology has changed even. Right. So in the past, before all the internet and before you could communicate so easily, it was a big advantage to be at a place where there were great experts immediately in offices next to you. Because if you got stuck, you could go talk to them personally and right. you would learn very quickly. Right. And the, 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 you learn very quickly when you're trying to solve a problem. That's when you learn the tools yes. because you, you quickly know what you want and, and how to get to the bottom of what, what's at the, uh, in, in a technique. So I would say that it was a, a big advantage to be in a good place. That's not so much an advantage, it's still the case because in person yes. discussion, talking on the blackboard, I still work on the blackboard only. Right. It's still the only way to do, really do math, the way I think of math. I see. Uh, so it, it's very, uh, it, if, you have, if you're surrounded by top quality people, mm. it makes you that much better and that much more ambitious. So I was very lucky to be at such institutions. Yeah. And, um, and as I say, over time, that big advantage is a little less so today. You can contact somebody if you have some idea and mm. if you really have a good idea, they'll respond and you can Zoom and so on. So I think that in terms of um, one of your questions was globally uh, yes. in terms of how this influences and how other places might be able to uh, compete. Mm. Um, it is true that the playing field is a bit more level right. because of the way we can communicate with each right. other these days. Um, the way I think uh, universities like Princeton, which is where I've been for the most, um, do very well, is we're lucky not only in having uh, outstanding, um, I'm talking about research now, and, uh, the undergraduate is different. We have great undergraduates yeah. and math majors. But if you uh, already are well established, you have the luxury of bringing in the students who are the best in the world. So many of my students have been Chinese who are like winners of the w world math Olympiad, uh, right. right? They yeah. apply and we take yeah. them and having won the yeah. World Math Olympiad, I know that X or Y sure. is probably going to be very smart. For sure. And they usually are extremely sure. smart. So you bring in great students, the great students influence the other students, they teach other students. Um, the competition is good, but it's not bad. It's not fierce in the sense that this is all about um, just competition. The students learn from other students who are in the same position more than anybody else. And so if you have a good cohort of students, it's... So I've, I've been spoiled, let's be honest. Sure. I've been spoiled sure. that we've been able to bring fantastic students. Right. And my colleagues are fantastic. So overall, that uh, makes life... Uh, you know, it's like... Um, Maybe you compare it to a football team, you know, right. if you have good players, they, they, yeah. they influence each other. So um, in terms of what your question was uh, about internationally collaboration, uh, collab collaboration that's, 
Well, in mathematics, that's mm. extremely important. Collaboration, yes. right. in my view, is extremely right. important. Yeah, again, I, I've been in this business for a long time. Um, when I got my PhD, mm. most math, pure math, uh, papers were written single authored. Right. People work by themselves. That we, they talk to each other, but yeah. in the end, you wrote a paper and it was your you 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 worked out everything from A to Z with some hints. The main contributor. Yes, uh, but and a single author. Uh, that was right. sort of typical. Yeah. Today there are very few single authored papers. I mean, um, uh, I'm talking about you know the papers that are really decisive. Mm. Um, and the typical paper might have four or five authors today. Exactly. So there's a tremendous change over the last 50 years. Right. And, uh, and that's because the subject has become much more advanced in terms of technical skill, in terms of knowledge, so that you, of course, uh, if you have different people with different backgrounds combining their uh, understanding, they can maybe attack a problem which one individual might have more trouble doing or, or would take a long yeah. time to do. So collaboration is, things have evolved to collaboration, but I was always from the very beginning enjoyed much more collaboration. So, I mean, you've got to do something by yourself exactly. to prove that you can do something. But I was writing papers with uh, collaborators who have been extremely important in my development. Uh, in fact, any prize I win is a prize that they deserve as much as myself. So I am very much appreciative of them. Sure. Um, their contribution of it, I could mention them by name, but there have been certain people who I've collaborated with who are transformative in the sense that my uh, outlook and understanding changed by working with them. Exactly. And uh, again, that's, uh, they have not necessarily been my colleagues, but people who you meet in conferences. Conferences and people who you might, maybe conferences, or they may come and give a seminar, or you might go give a seminar, and then uh, you go afterwards uh, and a chat, and then you realize, oh wait, uh, there's some really interesting thing, and then it clicks, and you start working. You don't, so yeah. solving is very rare. Right. You're very rare to solve a problem, really. I mean, you can make progress, and you can write reviews, but real mm. progress is very rare. Exactly, yeah, yeah. so mathematics always start from, you know, cooperation yes. and then you know you give an inspire inspiring uh, sharing right. and then I can learn some skills from your talk right. and then I can use the techniques that you mentioned to solve my problems exactly so the exchange of idea has become very important right. nowadays and and it's across international boundaries right. there mathematicians uh, just yeah. talk math yeah uh, there's no boundaries right, right, right even in the when there's a lot of tensions. Yeah. Yeah. Because uh, for me, as a you know, computational uh, mathematician, so we try to use mathematics to solve different problems originated from you know, various disciplines, even from you know, uh, space, yes. geography, or right. you know, even from uh, physics and chemistry. So yes. all those things can be solved by mathematics. Yeah, it, yeah. Is, it is the language of everything. Exactly. Especially now with exactly. the role of computers. Exactly.